Swamp Thing, episode eight, The Long Walk Home. This is your boy, The Icon, here. Three episodes to go, and then we close the chapter on this. So uh, let's get this started right away. So this episode starts, it was very very simple episode, not a lot of complexity here. Um, it starts exactly where the last one left off, where Avery Sunderland pulled his dead carcass out from the depths, <laughs> from the depths of the ocean. And while he was in the water, you know, the same way how like when Alec Holland was under the water, he got consumed by the power of the swamp, by the power of the green. Um, Averly kind of went through the same situation, but not as much because while he was underwater, the swamp did affect him. You know, he was affected by the power of the green because he started seeing things. You know, he started seeing his baby mama, <laughs> you know, who had a gun to his head. Um, he was he was having visions of his father, um, f f like back when him and his like when he was a boy and his dad used to take him hunting. Because he said earlier in the season, he always kept saying that you know the swamp took my daddy, the swamp took my daddy, and we finally actually got a chance to see how that happened. His dad was at him and his dad when they were out in the, they were out in the forest. His dad was basically destroying the forest, like cutting up trees, lighting stuff on fire, basically abusing the swamp. And, you know, come to find out the swamp itself and Avery witnessed this entire situation. The swamp actually kind of fought back against his dad because, you know, since his dad was abusing the swamp, there was a moment where like the, the leaves and the vines, they came out of nowhere. They grabbed because uh, his dad had lit a fire. Like there was like, you know, he was lighting fires, or whatever. The swamp grabbed his dad, kind of like yanked him in. And then, you know, he dropped what he was doing. The fire went off and the swamp kind of pulled his dad into the fire and burnt his dad alive. And the whole thing about the swamp reaching out and grabbing his father and pulling his father into the fire, Avery himself actually witnessed that, which is why he keeps saying the swamp took my dad. He's the only person who knew the swamp was alive before Swamp Thing knew the swamp was, <laughs> was alive. But now that he's been infected by the green, he's, he's starting to see that himself. And, you know, so, so he, once again, he got to witness his father's death. So now he's like on the floor, he's like going crazy, you know, like he's, you know, <laughs> he's freaking out or whatever. And then he sees like this big gigantic, you know, person of a man, which ends up having to be Swamp Thing, Alec Holland. Um, Alec grabs him, scoops him up and brings him back to, you know, to the house on the river where Swamp Thing stays at because he was trying to like nurse him back to health and make sure he was okay. So now... We're, we uh, we move on to Abby Arcane because remember in the last episode after um she told Alex she was going to stay and fight and then Alec was like no get away from me <laughs> you know she left remember she told Liz she was going to go back to Atlanta because she had some samples with her that she said that she couldn't analyze those in Marais she had to do them back at the CDC so she goes to the CDC she bumps into her Asian friend her Asian friend lets her know that you know like there's a there's a new director that's here and she don't take no ish the director is just like we heard about what she was doing the hospital said so she's basically like you know we spoke to the hospital we spoke to your Asian friend over here we spoke to all your colleagues they said that you've been missing and you haven't been checking in and you've been spending all your time in the swamp and then she's like yeah my folks threw me under the bus <laughs> so she you know so she was just like listen um the director she's like listen we'll we'll run the samples but she was like me and you need to have a talk because nobody knows what's going on with you like we don't know what's happening we don't know what the deal is all we know is that you're out in the swamp and we don't know why so she gives her the samples you know they start looking at the samples and then she starts talking to her friend she got mad at her friend because she was just like listen while i was getting my ass chewed out <laughs> by the director she was like you know you could have said something you could have kind of like defended me and he was like i don't know what to say to defend you because He's like, me and you were supposed to be like tight. We're supposed to be best friends and you didn't even tell me what's going on. So she kind of, conf so then she got, she got mad. She went home. Um, the Asian dude, he went to, he followed her, which was like crazy. He went to her house, brought her some food. The two of them ended up having a conversation. They had a nice little conversation where she briefly talked about her mom, how like her mom died when she was at a young age. I, think, I believe she said eight years old. And, you know, because the Asian guy, he was like, listen, you and I have always been friends. We've always been able to talk. So he was just like, the fact that you went MIA, for me of all people, is what hurt the most. Like she told him about Alec, that Alec is the swamp thing now, and, you know, how she was studying it. And then he was just like, you know, he believed her. He was like, you know, you're my people. So if you think you can help him, if you think you can cure him, I got your back. So the two of them made up. They're friends again. He, he grabs his keys. He ends up going home. He gets downstairs, he's walking to his car, and then he gets run he gets ran up on, you know, by the men in black. You know, they hit him with, they hit him with the neuralizer, put the bag over his head, throw him in the back of the car. He got scooped up and then he goes away. Abby goes back to work the next day. She's going to check on the samples 
you know, that she had put in and now all of a sudden her key card doesn't work. So they've restricted access. And then the director shows up and the director basically hit her with one of those, it's out of my hands now, it's above my pay grade situations. She was like, listen, I just need you to come with me to go to this room. I'm out. <laughs> she was like, my name's Bennett and I ain't in it. So she puts Abby in a room and then um, Black Man to Daddy show up. And then he's just like, you know, Miss Arcane, you know, like have a seat. And she's like, I ain't sitting nowhere until you tell me what this is all about. And he was just like, first of all, we know about Alec Holland. We know he's a swamp creature. We got the DNA. We got the evidence. So he was just like, don't try to deny that shit. He's like, all we need you to do, because he was just like, you know, we about to bring this fool in for testing. He's like, all we need you to do, because apparently you're close to him. He trusts you. We just need you to talk to him on our behalf to try to smooth things over. Because he, he basically flat out said, if, you really, if you're really friends with him, if you cool with him, if that's your boy, if Alec Holland is your people, have him come in quietly or we're gonna storm the castle and snatch his ass up. So then Abby got defensive and then she's like, I ain't doing that shit. She's like, I got work to do, motherfuckers. And then she she, she left and slammed the door. She's like, I'm going back to Murray, Louisiana. And then, she, and then she left and she went to go see Alec. But now, well, if anything, she went to go warn Alec because now she's aware that the government's coming, you know, coming for that ass. So she hops on the plane. She's headed back to, um, she's headed back to Murray. They actually did say that her Asian friend, when he got scooped up, um, Black Manta Daddy did did mention that they got the information about Holland from him. So clearly they tortured the man, <laughs> and but they told Abby that he got relocated <laughs> to like Abu Dhabi. And I'm like, yeah, he probably did get relocated after they beat his ass and <laughs> pumped him full of all that information. So now she knows her friend is now she knows her friend is possibly beat up, dead or missing, and you know, and and Swamp Thing is next, so she going to warn him. So now Sunderland, Sunderland wakes up at, at Swamp Thing's house. And when he was just like, is that Alec Holland? And then he's just like, you took everything from me. And then the worst thing you can do, the worst thing you can do with Avery Sunderland is have a conversation with him. Cause that man has a way of spinning things and like talking you down off the ledge. And you don't even, you didn't even realize you was on the ledge to begin with. So he gets into Swamp Thing's head and he basically pumps him full of information about like, oh, we can save you. My money, we can save you. My boy Woodrow, we can turn you back into Alec Holland. And then he's just like, you know, what about that girl, Abby Arcane? You like Abby, don't you? And then once, once, once he brought up Abby, Swamp Thing was like, well, shit, maybe I should be turned back to North. Cause Swamp Thing at first, he was, he, he kind of accepted who he was. He was like, you know, he was like, it's my job. He's like, I, be I became this swamp creature to protect the green from you. And then he was like, protect the green? The green out here killing people. He's like, the green's killing people because you're killing the green. And it's just like, you know, it's just like the two of them are going back and forth. But once he brought up turning him human and talking about Abby, then Swamp Thing, he kind of like fell back on his argument. So, so Sunderland was like, look, he was like, you saved my life. You pulled me out of the river. You nursed me back to health. He, Swamp Thing even brought him a boat to take him back to Murray because he told him, he was like, you know, like, you're a bad man. You deserve to die. You're the reason why this happened to me. But he was like, I'm not going to be the one to kill you. He was just like, you know, I'm still, I'm still me at the end of the day. So I'm going to get you a boat to get you back to, get you back to Murray. And because of that, Sunderland was actually just like, yo, he was like, I appreciate this, Highland. He's like, I'm going to do right by you. I'll be back and we're going to save you, boy. So um, so Avery went back. He went back to civilization. He, you know, And then Swamp Thing was just left to contemplate whether or not he made the right decision. So Sunderland goes to Woodrow's house. And then he's just like, you know, he's, he's like, yo, you got to come with me. I found Alec Holland. And then, and then Sunderland's whole thing was like, well, yeah, we had that whole conversation at the dinner you missed last night. And then he was just like, what, like, what dinner? And then he was just like, oh, your wife didn't tell you. And then he told, he told him about the whole thing, like with his wife getting the government contract. And he's like, that bitch done scooped me out from under, you know, from under getting that contract. So now, now he knows his wife set him up. So Avery now, he's just like, oh, snap. So he spoke to, um, he spoke to Woodrow and then he was just like, listen, is it possible for you to actually cure Holland? Because he knows Woodrow saw the samples that Abby had shown him before. And then Woodrow was kind of like, eh. <laughs> like, it's like, for he, like you can tell Woodrow was kind of like, he could, but then he was just like, well, maybe not because regenerative tissue might be hard. But then he was just like, why would you want to do that anyway? <laughs> because he was like the type of cell regeneration that this creature has, it can save the world. And by world, he means his wife, because Woodrow's whole thing is he's just motivated by saving his wife. His wife has um, a brain disease. His wife has dementia. His wife is losing her memories. He just wants to save his wife. Damn, like the rest of the world be damned. So he's using 
the Avery situation, you know, to try, like he's telling Avery, like, let's not turn him back to normal because he can save the world, but he's really just trying to save his, he's really trying to stop him from curing Holland so he can save his wife. So, you know, and then the funny thing is, Avery's always the person who talks people into shit. He's always the manipulator. This is the first time I actually saw somebody like manipulate him where he let Woodrow convince him not to save Alec Holland. And to Sunderland's credit, he was actually going to do the right thing because he did ask him a couple of times. He was like, could you cure him? Like he did, his intent was to make good on his promise. But like I said, like Woodrow talked him out of it. So they get together. So then like the next day, Woodrow and Sunderland, you know, they go down and they talk to, they talk to Holland. You know, he was just like, oh, he was like, could you really turn me back into Alec Holland? And then Sunderland hit him with the, yeah, but maybe you don't want to. He was just like, why would you want to be normal? He was like, there's enough normal in the world. Why not be the extraordinary, be the exception? So he kind of like tried to talk him out of, out of that. And then, you know, during the conversation, the Swamp Thing was just like, who else have you brought with me? Because Sunderland and them, like, they brought the goons. And I don't understand why they did that because... Sunderland had him. Sunderland had him on the hook. You know, Sunderland had him convinced he was going to try to save him and turn him back to normal. He probably would have gone with Sunderland of his own accord quietly. But then when he heard the, um, the when he heard the goons or the Ghostbusters, because when they came out, these mother, these motherfuckers came out looking like the Ghostbusters with the backpacks and everything. When he saw the Ghostbusters coming, he was just like, "Oh, you betrayed me!" And then he just proceeded to start killing everybody. He was stabbing people in the throat. They were shooting at him. You know, like they they had the red beams on him and they was trying to take him out. So now, like it says, Swamp Thing killing everybody. He killing everybody now. <laughs> he trying. To take everybody out and then they uh I, I i mean i was i was making fun of them calling them ghostbusters but what it was was they had um mr freeze's nitrogen on their back and they basically used it to freeze holland so they froze him into a block of ice because again if you know anything about the swamp thing he's like the the moisture like water is what keeps him healthy and keeps him strong so if you dry him out that's how you can take him out and but that also works if you freeze him because if he's like 100 percent water if he's like 98 percent water two percent leaves then, then obviously if you freeze him you'll stop him in his tracks so they froze him and now they're going to take him back to woodrow's lab the interesting thing about that is now that sunderland and woodrow have swamp thing how does that play out to black manta daddy <laughs> like and the wife because he was already on his way. Like he told Abby, listen, talk to him. Otherwise we going in. Abby gave him the finger. So he's going in like, like his troops are going in there to bust that ass. So but Sunderland got to him first. So there might be a bumping of the heads between, you know, like the, like the government and, and Sunderland try to get their hold of his body. But Sunderland has him for now. So um, we're, that's what we're rolling with. And then Abby come rolling in at the last second, you know, Alec, like screaming for Alec. And then she sees signs of the struggle and everything. And then she realizes Alec's gone. She doesn't know Sunderland has him yet, but she knows that he's missing. And because of the conversation she had with Homeboy, she probably assumes that the government got their hands on her and on, on him. And she doesn't know that it's actually Sunderland as of yet. And, um, and also, um, quick note, um, Maddie had a conversation with his mom where they were talking about his, um, his, his daddy. And then she was just like, you know, like she was, she was just like, I, I was trying to keep Avery, Avery from you. And he was like, I'm not talking about Avery. He's like, I'm not talking about the man who created me. I'm talking about the man who actually raised me like my actual daddy, daddy. Cause apparently his mom was in a relationship with someone else who raised Maddie, but he left because she was cheating on him with Sunderland. So uh, that's jacked up, but that's, that's obviously a conversation for a different day because this episode was about Avery Sunderland meeting Swamp Thing and Abby in the CDC and everything else, um, everything else be damned. <laughs> so, uh, that was it. Um, thank you for tuning in. Very, um, very interesting. Let me know what you think so far. Let me know what you think is going to happen as far as, you know, Swamp Thing is concerned now that he's under the, the evil clutches of, <laughs> you know, of the Sunderland gang. Um, let me know how, what, what, let me know what you think actually happened to her Asian friend <laughs> after, after he gave up the information. Is he alive? Did he get relocated? Is he just like in a basement somewhere with his brains beat in? You know, we'll make a conversation and we'll talk about it. Two more episodes in the book. And, you know, like I said, we'll ride this train all the way to the end of the green and in down in Murray. So again, leave a comment. Uh, leave a comment. Um, definitely hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so you can get notified. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when new reviews pop up, when other things pop up on the channel. Like I said, let's build this community. Let's have this conversation and keep it rolling. So until next time, for the greed, take care, everybody. And I'm out this bitch.